Hello and welcome to another edition of Drop In Bombs with me, your host, Cory Ballmeister. As always, brought to you by the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com, bringing you the best in trading card needs. Okay, so Christmas, I didn't think it was possible, but Christmas is coming twice this year. We're getting not only a new standard here with Throne of Eldraine, but now we're getting a refresher course thanks to Field of the Dead being gown. Field of the Dead was a very oppressive magic card that was shutting down a lot of strategies. A lot of control strategies, which technically I'm not the biggest fan of because they will see a rise in popularity. But you know what? Maybe we're actually going to see our Rock, Paper, Scissors metagame instead of our Rock, Paper, Golos metagame where Golos just beats Rock and Paper, you know? It just, uh, it's a very oppressive card and with that card gone, we're going to see the metagame open wide up again and that is just... It's just second Christmas for a standard content creator. So what we're playing today is Jund Food. This is a sweet deck I saw 5-0 on the latest deck dump here. I think the synergies between Cauldron Familiar, Witch's Oven, Midnight Reaper, and Mayhem Devil all work together extremely well. And now you're adding new toys like Vraska and Wicked Wolf that your traditional Rakdos uh, Arista Cats decks couldn't really have access to. So now we kind of have that power level, like the, the just power and toughness instead of the more, how do you say, more just like kind of cheeky power level that the Rakdos decks had before. We still get that kind of cheeky combos with Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar, and Mayhem Devil. But now we just get to also go over the top. Plus we get some unconditional removal spells with Assassin's Trophy in the board. We get to try out Savvy Hunter, which is just absolutely awesome and then we get to play what i think is one of the most if not the most i'll say one of the most the most i think is a stretch because we have oko and nissa which are still going to be running rampant but one of the most powerful cards in the form of wicked wolf wicked wolf now is basically going to have almost not any matchups where it's dead against because it was essentially a dead card against golos now like i said these control shells are going to be popping up but wicked wolf Still has relevant text against control shells because of its indestructible indestructibility clause where it can live through Kaya's Wrath. So it, it's actually just going to be great in like all matchups where when, as when you were playing against Golos, it was a card you just immediately side out. I don't think that's going to be uh, the thing anymore with Wicked Wolf. So, all right, everybody, I am very excited to play the games. I hope you're excited to watch and we'll see you over for round one. All right, welcome to round one here with Jund Food. We are on the play. We gotta love that. Okay, this is a little land heavy here. Um, we do have the Witch's Oven, so if we were to get the cat, this is a uh, pretty nice combo here. This many land is a lot. On the play, I'm considering keeping this on the draw. I would for sure ship this back, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it for science. All right, we'll start with the oven. All right, Watery Grave. Okay, Doom Whisper is not bad. All right, we're going to just play this and say go. This could be like a blue-black control. Everything's kind of new now that Golos is gone, so really no uh, particular deck that I would pinpoint anything on, which is exciting. So we've been drawing kind of decently out of this. Um... Now we can generate a food with here if they try to kill it. All right, the goose. We got a Sultai food list. Okay, another Paradise Druid. All right, we're gonna say go. Okay, so I think we're gonna wanna fight this Gilded Goose. Let's see if they wanna block with uh, and trade with Midnight Reaper. We don't care too much because it does replace itself. Uh, they chose not to, so we're just going to go like this. Wicked Wolf and kill this Gilded Goose. At least get some value out of it. And then we can go Doom Whisperer next turn as our kind of giant creature here that actually is an engine to uh, fix our draws as well. Looks like our opponent might just be on Mono uh, Accelerant here, maybe not drawing the top end. Okay. Well, now I can choose to keep Wicked Wolf alive or Midnight Reaper. 
I think keeping Wicked Wolf alive is more important, so we're going to sacrifice Midnight Reaper. Let's get a food. And we'd like to regenerate. Now they could have another one and then we kind of get got by this, but... Okay. Chose not to attack. And we can just offer a trade here with two Paradise Druids. It's not great. I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. I think we're just going to go Doom Whisper and then say go. Assassin's Trophy. Okay, so I don't think we're going to let that ability resolve. We're going to instead sacrifice. I don't want either of these, or activate, excuse me. Activate again. We just want anything good. Was that the exact same? Okay. All right, we can activate one more time safely, but okay, that's good enough. Now we are going to sacrifice, get some food. Oh yeah, if the creature is larger, you get two foods. That's right, I forgot about that. Yeah, that doesn't normally come up with the witch's oven here. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well now we're gonna attack. All right, now we'll just play another Doom Whisper. Play a Blood Crypt tapped and say go. Now if they have another removal for uh, Doom Whisper, it gets a little awkward here. Questing Beast, okay. We'll have to just block that, I assume. All right. Do we, I think we can afford to activate once, but like only once. Those are bad. All right, we're gonna activate again. We have two food laying around so we can replenish our life total a little bit more. But we're dancing with fire. Okay, these are good magic cards. All right, so I think we'll put Vraska on top, sacrifice, and then we can play Mayhem Devil or we just go Mayhem Devil on top and then draw into Vraska here. And then we sack a food just to uh, play, it, play it a little safe. There's nothing we really want to kill with Vraska, so we're going to do that. And we'll let this happen. Okay, dead. Now we'll say go. We will attack. All right, now we're gonna cast Mayhem Devil and just put a land into play tapped. But Mayhem Devil is gonna be sweet here. Absolutely sweet. All right, Questing Beast again would be a little annoying, but we can sack a food and block, which is pretty nice. That's not what we wanted to see. We're gonna respond by sacking a food. And here we get to sack two things, so we can kill the Gilded Goose, which I think is worth it. Or we could go upstairs, which I think is le less worth it. Oh, Mayhem Devil with Witch's Oven is just insane. All right, we're going to sack this. Kill the Goose. Okay. Now Murderous Rider will fizzle. Okay. All right, love it. Now we get to go Vraska. We're just gonna sack a land. Okay, that one's risky. I don't think we can play that, but I think we can attack. Maybe we can't. We could play Midnight Reaper, play a stomping ground tapped and just say go. Think I like that best. We have the long-term advantage here with Vraska, so we don't want to blow it. 
And we're at a low life total, so we want to guard against uh, Questing Beast here. It's pretty good. Okay. Now they can cast that as well. Not that big of a deal here. This is a nice little Sultai, uh, Sultai food. Spicy, spicy. Not the draw we wanted. Kind of want to attack with Midnight Reaper here. So they can go up to 11, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to attack with just Midnight Reaper. Okay, now we're just going to play this tapped and say go. Really hoping for like a Mayhem Devil or a Cat. Oh my god, a Cauldron Familiar would be so strong right now. Gilded Goose, okay. Ooh, that's a strong one. Okay, we're going to play this. And I think we're going to attack with Midnight Reaper here. Gonna take it, okay. Now, do we want to sacrifice two food to draw a card? I think it's a little risky, but maybe we still want to do that because we can also just sack a creature if we're starting to get a little too close. So we're gonna try it. Draw a card. Hmm. Okay. And we're gonna cast this and kill Midnight uh, Midnight Rider. And now we're starting to amass an army that uh, can just kill them here pretty soon. All right, so we'll say go. All right, they better have a big draw. Now they can gain a lot of life here too, so they, they do have some time. They're probably gonna sack, okay. Now our Wicked Wolves are open to being destroyed though, so. We're still afraid of what their top end could be. Um, you know, Sultai has a lot of different options here for high end stuff and there we found it. Oof. Surprised they didn't go for a, a six six here to actually threaten um, lethal. Okay. Another savvy hunter. I think we're gonna attack with these three. Now, it's interesting because Savvy Hunter, we are, we're attacking and then we're likely just going to have to sacrifice it to the Witch's Oven if they block. But then we're going to gain some food. So I think it's worth it. But if that's the case, I think we just want to bring everything. Now we're going to play a creature as a blocker for this. And we'll be able to gain like six life. Okay, so we are going to sacrifice Midnight Reaper since it's gonna die anyways. Make some food. There's a Mayhem Devil. Creating a food. All right, so Mayhem Devil and then sack two things is quite strong. Or we could go Hunter as well. And then leave up enough to sack one food. So for sure this. Now what hasty threat punishes us if we play this? I can't really think of any. And just sacrificing one food I think should be enough here. So we're going to do that. And we'll ship it. Like a questing beast we can still block. Nissa, Okay. Great card, but we do have that under control. Okay, we do have that under control as well. They attack with that, sweet. All right, so we're gonna block here and they should be dead now. Block. Oh, when it blocks, it gets a food as well, holy. All right, so we'll deal one to this. 
Pass the damage, and yeah, we're gonna be cracking back for lethal here. 7, 10, 13. Ooh, <laughs> that was a bit of a misstep on our opponent's part, I have to say. I think they could have played that a little bit more defensively, but they did not. So, we will move on. We have Noxious Grass for this match. They're phenomenal. I like Angras Rampage because it does deal with Oko and Nissa, which they almost assuredly have. Now, what don't we want? Um, if they have a lot of removal for Doom Whisper, that card becomes a lot worse. Now, I just really want to have answers to Nissa because Nissa is such a problem. So that being the case, I could just max out on this to deal with Nissa. So all of our removal does play into Veil of Summer, which is a problem, but I don't think there's much we can do to play around it. So I'm going to take out Doom Whisper. I think it's a little risky with how much haste they have. Um, maybe we don't need Assassin's Trophy as well. And I think we can cut Paradise Druid. We can just be the grindy, uh, controlish deck. I think this is fine here. I think the Cat Oven combo is still good. Yeah, let's try this. This deck is sweet. Jun Food. Never would I thought I, uh, saw the day that there would be a deck that I think is cooler than the Black Red Food. But adding Savvy Hunter and Wicked Wolf to the deck just makes so much sense. So, I'm a fan. All right, game two. Up a game against a Sultai... Sultai Trade Binder. I think we can say Sultai Trade Binder. Let's see. I mean, they still have more than likely Oko. They just didn't draw it. Now, they could have access to, like, Veraska as well as Nissa, And then Hydroid Crisis. So, still a, a, a ramp strategy. I think this is good. We are missing green, but we got some time to do so. I really like Castle Lockwin in this deck. I think there even should maybe be a few more. Then we do have the grass for uh, basically to deal with anything. Okay, Goose. We won't kill that. All right, another cat. We're going to get in our value attack here. Dang it, they got us. All right, now I think we just want to go land go. Um, yeah, we're just going to go castle go. And we are having mana problems. We do have three green cards in here, but we should draw one hopefully soon. But Oko. All right, well, at least we do have the answer for that. All right, green source would be perfect. Ooh, hey, not bad. Not bad. I think we're just going to play this. We can just play Blood Crypt and then use Fabled Passage next turn. I think that might be better. It's pretty cute with uh, Veraska here, sacking uh, Cauldron Familiars and then getting food back uh, with other, other ways. All right, a second castle. No Nissa is huge. Um, and we can try to kill this with Vraska. Does cut off blue. I kind of like that. All right, we'll sack this. Then we can get in there. I mean, it's not crazy important, but... All right, hopefully they don't have, like, a disdainful stroke. That would be kind of brutal. All right. Gonna destroy it. Cook the goose. Not bad. At least we still got a little bit of value out of it. We kind of had to anticipate that it was going to be a murderous rider. And now we can go Savvy Hunter and start generating some food. We don't have the oven to keep these dead, but that's okay. Ooh, speak of the devil. Speak of the oven. Okay, this is awesome. I am immediately going to add another Castle Lock with. Like, I think two is the perfect number for this. Now, let's attack. Whichever one they block, we just get to sacrifice. All right. Meow. All right, kitty cat scratch time. We can block this, which is pretty spicy. Okay, we'll have to let that happen. Wicked Wolf is gonna be great here with uh, Field of the Dead Band. 
All right, we will sacrifice this, bring it back, drain. We'll just take one or take two here. Ooh, Wicked Wolf of our own. We can't cast that quite yet, but still a, a decent draw. Are we going to get another one of these going? I think we'll just attack for one here. I would rather have something to block and then uh, sacrifice. All right, something like a Nissa would be pretty scary for us right now. Okay, I think we want to sacrifice that because we do fizzle the spell then. All right, we can block, soak up some damage here. Okay. I'm gonna bring the cat back. Now, if we top deck another green, we can sack the cat. Nice, okay. So this is gonna be sweet. First, we get to attack. Now, we're not gonna be able to block and sacrifice, so we might as well just get in there. Now we're gonna sacrifice, kill one of the cats. Don't worry, they got nine lives. All right, we're gonna wicked wolf, or target their wicked wolf and then sack the food. Okay, now we can't cast that, then we'll say go. Now we can start kind of going off with Castle Lockwin. Okay, now they're a three color deck as well, so that, uh. That might unlock, ah, that's brutal. Okay, another Wicked Wolf though, that's kind of nice. We can just deal with this, or we can just get the goose out of here. That's probably a bigger problem. Yeah, let's just, let's just kill the goose. All right, then we'll say go. Now we can do some regenerating tricks with Wicked Wolf here. Yup. Sack the cat. Bring the cat back. Okay, now do we want to take two? I think we can afford to. Let's go tap, tap. Tap, castle, draw a card. Ooh. We'll have them sack a creature. All right, now we're still hoping for no Nissa. Nissa would be quite bad for us. All right, we'll say go. No, Nissa. They gotta have it, right? Like, they've been stuck on four lands, I feel, since the beginning of time. So we're just hoping to fade. Okay, that's not a Nissa. We're, we're very cool with that. All right, well, we will do the old oven cat trick. Oh, I guess they do have an option to kill this now. I think they're probably just gonna have a chance to do that anyways, unless I untap first. Yeah, let's do that. Ooh, that's good. All right, let's do this. Okay. So now we're gonna attack. We'll let this happen. Now we're gonna activate this, draw a card. Okay, we'll say go. Now we hope they use up their mana here. Okay, so they must have a way to kill something here. Wicked Wolf. Okay. Okay, so deals of damage. Wait, can we sack enough here? Yes, we can. Wow, this is gonna be insane. All right, so we're gonna bring this back. Sack of food, one damage. Oh, this is just busted. Drain, sack the cat. We can even do an extra point of damage. 
Jeez, Mayhem Devil and this cat combo is just unbelievable. Yep. Oh, they're so dead. They're so dead. <laughs> Sack the cat, take a damage. <laughs> yeah! Oh, man. What were they supposed to do, though? Like, I mean, sure, maybe they played into that a little bit, but I don't think there was really a way that they could play around that with Wicked Wolf. I mean, I... I could have dealt, what, four damage, five damage in total sprayed across the board when I drew Mayhem Devil? That's just insane. All right, everybody, stay tuned for our second round. All right, welcome to round two here with Jun Food. We're on the draw. Uh, this hand's fine. We have a removal spell on two and then uh, a couple Mayhem Devils and then top it off with Vraska. Vraska is insane with Mayhem Devil. Absolutely insane. Being able to deal a damage and... Uh, draw a card, gain a life, just unreal. Okay, once upon a time, see what they get. Okay, Temple of Malady. Could be a Simic food deck. All right, one to the bottom, we will just go. Blood Crypt, say go. Okay, Paradise Druid. So I would definitely imagine a, uh, maybe Bant Ramp. All right, we're... We're for sure gonna rampage here. We'll have them sacrifice a creature. One way that you can actually deal with a Paradise Druid, which is quite nice. Okay, another temple. All right. We're gonna go with just Mayhem Devil and pass it back. So what is this, a gross spiral? Aethergust, Brazen Bar, okay. Not bad at all, not bad. This might be the Kvartic Pro Tour deck. That would make a lot of sense to me. So I think I just want a Mayhem Devil and replay, and then play a Cauldron Familiar. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Yeah, okay, good. It's not a uh, Frilled Mystic. Frilled Mystic would have been quite brutal. All right, Drain for one, say go. And now the nice thing is if they go Brazen Borrower here and we're able to sacrifice something with Vraska, we just sacrifice Cauldron Familiar and then get to deal a damage to Brazen Borrower. Okay, that might stop our plan a bit. But maybe not, they might just make a food. Okay. Okay, well we can attack for four to Oko, which does not kill it. But I think we can pretty safely deal with Oko after that. We're just gonna attack. And now we're just gonna play Vraska and just kill Brazen Borrower. And then just play a Stomping Ground tapped. And now we can play Mayhem Devil plus Paradise Druid and then like sacrifice it. Oh, that's not what we wanted to see. Dang it. That is not what we wanted to see. That's gonna be quite good. They didn't want to make it a 6-6. Six, six. So now we really want to find a way to deal with this. Ah, oh, yeah, Nissa was just so bad. Guess we're going to go Midnight Reaper. We're going to attack here. And attack Nissa. Assuming they're blocking our Elk here. All right, now we're gonna take two and either play Savvy Hunter or Mayhem Devil. I think it's better for Savvy Hunter. And we'll pass it back. Ugh, that Nissa was good. Now we're afraid of a lot. They do only have two cards left in hand, so that's not so bad. Now an oven would probably get us out of this because we can go Mayhem, Oh no. <laughs> that's quite strong. Quite strong. Okay, get another food. Hmm. Well, I think I want to attack with Savvy Hunter and Cauldron Familiar. All right, we'll go both at Nyssa. See how this works. Probably not well.
Okay, this actually works kind of decent. We draw a couple cards. Wow, okay. So if we go Mayhem Devil... All right, we go Mayhem Devil, we sack the food, that's one damage. We play the oven, we sack the cat, then we sack the oven itself. So we can kill Hydroid Crisis with this. All right, so we'll bring this back, sacrificing this. Deal one to Crisis. Drain. Sack the cat. Deal a damage to Krasis. Sack the food. Deal one to Krasis. Now just Paradise Druid and say go. Not a bad turn. Not a bad turn, but we're still up against it. But that at least, at least we dealt with the major threat, which was a 6-6 flyer. But yeah, like another crisis would probably just shut the door here. Simic uh, Ramp is going to be the most powerful deck going into week one post uh, Field of the Dead ban. Uh, but it's not going to be unbeatable. And I think we normally have a pretty good matchup against it. So uh, oh we will see here. Now we can Wicked Wolf fighting some of the lands. Okay. Okay, this isn't exactly uh, power hitters here. We can beat these cards. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna have to sack this. I'll sack the cat to get a food. Draw a card. Now another mayhem devil would just be sweet. No such luck. But we do have wicked wolf here. Are right, we gonna go with the Wicked Wolf? Fight this forest down. Sacrifice the food. Now we can't bring back Cauldron Familiar now, but that is okay. Brazen Bar would be quite strong. All right, no. Now, what do we want to attack with? I think we want to attack Oko this time. Since we can't kill Nyssa. Now let's try to take Oko off the battlefield. Wow. Surprised they didn't do that with Wicked Wolf. That's discipline. Okay, just a trade. Now, we don't have any great plays here. I think Savvy Hunter is probably the best, just because we don't have that much green. And we'll go land go. Now they could sack some food if they wanted, but yep, decides not to. Yeah, just the threat of all this, uh, of these Planeswalkers is just gonna be too much here. But post board getting, uh, ooh, that's pretty good. At least we can bring back Cauldron Familiar now. The land shall come from you. We'll just let this happen. So they could sack two food to draw a card, which they definitely might do. Now we're going to bring back the cat with the food that they gave us. All right. We're going to play Midnight Reaper.
I'm gonna sack the familiar. Draw a card. Let the value train keep coming. Now we can go to fight this hunter. Think we should. Sack the food. Okay, they're gonna draw a card. It's been a good game. I mean, we've been severely behind, but starting to fight back a little bit. All right. Now we're gonna attack Nissa here because it's a ball to ultimate. They probably just chump with the goose. Brazen borrower. Okay. Now, do we think we're gonna die? If we do, we can just play the cat so we can have an extra blocker. I think we do wanna do that just so we could like double block with Paradise Druid and uh, Cauldron Familiar. Oh, wow. I got a target out of it, that's too bad. All right, we'll say go. Now they can ultimate if they want, but it's not the biggest deal. Indestructible lands is kind of annoying. Rise, my elemental friend. So they could attack for 12 this turn if they use Oko to turn the food into a 3-3. Then I think we got a block with both creatures. Okay. All right, we're gonna kill that. We're gonna chump this. We're gonna go down to two. A goose isn't bad. It's a chump blocker for the in the air at least. Okay. Hmm. I think we almost want to fight gilded goose here, just so we don't have to turn this sideways. I think we actually have a chance in this game here if we play this correctly. So I'm gonna think this out. Now, Wicked Wolves, if they both go to Nyssa, they have to chump at least one, which I like. So let's just do that. All right, both at Nyssa. Just chumps one. Okay. Create a food which can turn into a 3-3. Three, three. Now, worst case scenario, we can sack one of our Wicked Wolves, which will generate uh, two blockers. So now I think I want to... Wicked Wolf here. Probably just fight this flyer. Sack the food. We're probably going to have to sack one of these wicked wolves, realistically. All right, we'll play this land tapped. Then we'll say go. Now we can bring back two cauldron familiars then. And go up to four, which is probably gonna be relevant. And hopefully we can keep the goose around. Oh no! Why did it have to be crisis? Hmm. The land fights for us. Oh, I wonder if that was a top tag. It had to have been, otherwise they would have played it last turn, I imagine. All right, so we need to sack a Wicked Wolf to get two foods. Let's get back this. Yeah, we can exactly stay alive. We 
We have to just chump, chump, chump. Doesn't get us very far moving forward, but what can we do? Just trying to stay alive. All right. Yeah, that's gonna be game. Wow, great game though. Great game. I mean, we were we were super far behind from the second that Nissa hit uh, hit the table and killed Vraska. Maybe there's something we could have did differently to to uh, avoid that. But once that got down, it was a, a little too tough to deal with. But post board, we get to bring in just stuff to kill Nissa. And what don't we want? A savvy hunter seems okay. But we're not really attacking in combat too often. Doom Whisper also, I think, is really bad. If that ever gets Oko'd, I just I, I think you're you're losing too much in that exchange. I think we can take out the Paradise Druids and maybe one of each of the oven combos. Um drawing two ovens is bad. Drawing two cats is usually pretty bad too. We just wanna be the mid-range deck um and just win by destroying their planeswalkers and then winning with value creatures. <laughs> so we want the games to go long, but we want to make sure they're not so long where they can just play crisis without Nissa that are gigantic. So there's a fine window that we have to close this game. Okay, we're going to keep. We got the goose to generate black mana plus the oven combo to keep that going as well as the savvy hunter. I think just turn two savvy hunter here is going to be pretty sweet. And then just start attacking, generating uh, uh, food, which will then the goose will turn into mana. Okay. That was a great game one, though. That really was. A lot of uh, decisions back and forth. All right. So. Now, Mayhem Devil or Savvy Hunter is the choice. Or just Oven. Oven and cat. Nah, I really want to get a three drop going. Let's go with just the savvy hunter. Maybe they don't have the Oko. Said nobody ever. Yeah, now if they turn this into an elk, we're in a lot of trouble because we're kind of relying on this. Nice. Okay. That's huge. And that was great too. All right, so we're going to attack. Oh, we get to do some dirty plays here. Create a food. All right, now we get to go Mayhem Devil. So now we can sack this for mana, deal one. Play the oven and sacrifice the goose, deal two to kill their goose. I mean, it seems... Seems kind of needed right now. Otherwise they can get Nissa online next turn. All right, oven. We'll cook the goose. Veil. Oh, yeah, the Veil trigger goes on the stack, though. One thing they forgot. Yes, they get to draw a card, but... Nice. Okay, now they can't Nissa. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a, that interaction is really nice, and you could tell that was a little bit of a shame scoop on their part, but uh, keep an eye on those interactions. It is when we sacrifice something or when they sacrifice. Very important. All right, well, on the draw, I almost want to go even more reactive. Legion's End on the draw is pretty nice. Um, as well as maybe even one theater. They can't really do much to a theater. If we're bringing in all this ways to kill their stuff, it might not be bad. Yeah, just really play the control deck here. I like it. We're going to try it. On the play, I don't like it as much, but on the draw, since we're basically trying to be solely reactive, I think it's pretty nice. All right, game three against Simic Food here. The de facto best deck now that Field of the Dead is dead. Okay, we can keep. 
It's not great or anything, but... We can hopefully start going off with theater. Then we have the rampage for something on two. Now we're going to start with this. Just so we can make sure we guarantee our three drops, we either got to go for red or black. And I think black makes more, er, uh, red makes more sense. We have double black already in our hand. All right, let's check this out. Red or black, doesn't matter too much. I think we'll go with, we'll go with red. I think we're just gonna Angrath this. Yeah, I mean, shutting him off on mana here seems really good. All right, target player sacrifices a creature. And now we're probably just gonna get Theater of Horrors going. Cause Theater of Horrors triggers off like cats. Okay, there's Oko. Oko's good. Don't get me wrong. All right, we're gonna we're gonna lean with theater here. We just really want to find a land so we can just verask it at least. Okay. Oh Assassin's trophy. Well, I mean, we can play familiar, but then we can't cast Assassin's Trophy. So we're just going to start with this. And we'll say go. Theater of Horrors is pretty bad against Brazen Bar, So we got to be pretty active about uh, when we choose to use. Ugh, that's good. About when we choose to use this. And we might have to just Assassin's Trophy Wicked Wolf here. If we can get a land, we have two draws at it. Okay, so there's the forest and there's that. So that's pretty strong here. We need that land. All right, we'll go with the familiar. Now I think we just want to kill Wicked Wolf while we can. Ah, dang it. That's probably game. That's probably game. Veil vale is going to be quite good against us. We just every single card we have is black removal. So not much we can do here. And sat or just block with the cat to try to stay alive a little longer. Hopefully they don't have a follow-up. That's a follow-up. That's a follow-up, unfortunately. Mayhem Devil, yeah, none of this is gonna do it. Dang it. Yeah, because we can't really kill Wicked Wolf at this point. We can play Familiar plus... Familiar plus Assassin's Trophy this, I guess. Keeps us alive. Assassin's Trophy here, hope to draw more removal. Fine. Problem is Wicked Wolf just like can't be killed. We just have to chump block it for so often. So I guess we need like an oven. I don't think that's gonna be enough, but. Oh, that's definitely a game. Oh, well, tough match, tough match. Game one was super close, but just Wicked Wolf is a big problem still. Um, there's got to be a better answer, but I think just we really need to get ahead. Um, and maybe our sideboard plan isn't exactly perfect against Wicked Wolf itself. So 
Oh well, we're one and one. Stay tuned for our third round here with Jun Food. And welcome to our third and final round here with Jun Food. All right, we lost, lost the die roll, so we'll be on the draw, but this hand is fine. If we can get an oven uh, stitched together, we are really gonna kind of be comboing off here. But I mean, no matter what, this hand's pretty solid. All right, a temple there. So must be teamer super friends. Yep. Okay, this can be a bit of a rough matchup, I imagine. Just turn three Oko or something seem, or turn two Oko seems just really rough. Okay, that was a good draw on our part though. A really good draw actually. So we're gonna do this and then we can get a turn two Savvy Hunter. Not as good as a turn two Oko turns out, but uh, still quite strong. Okay. No land? Okay, so they just have a bunch of, bunch of land here. All right, I think we just want Savvy Hunter. Start it off like this, we'll say go. Now we can... We're gonna deal with that, that would not be cool. Questing Beast. Okay, Questing Beast is always quite good. No, we could block to get a food. That doesn't seem very good. So we'll just say no blocks. Okay. Now we can go second Savvy Hunter or we could go Midnight Reaper here. I think Midnight Reaper, that way if we double block we would get a food, so that would turn online, and then we get to draw two cards. It's not the worst, not the best. Oh, that's not good. So that is first strike and trample. So now we might as well block with this. Get a food, and then hopefully we can uh, top deck a land in the next two cards so we can Wicked Wolf and kill Questing Beast. Okay, sweet. All right, so Wicked Wolf. Target this. Sack of food. All right. We'll start pressuring the Royal Scions here. Now they got a couple chump blockers. We're gonna have to get uh, these Coldron Familiars going pretty soon here. Just to gain some life to get out of like Sarkin. I guess we just died of Sarkin anyways here. Yeah, Sarkin just ticks up the Royal Scion, pumps itself, and we just die. So we want to get out of range from that. Oh, I guess we can block with the Goose. So we, we don't die to Sarkin this turn. We do die to Questing Beast number two. Okay, now we don't. All right, we're gonna just have to keep pressuring the Royal Scions until we can get it dead. Vivian, okay. Yeah, they were a uh, decent ways off. They needed another forest to cast that Vivian. But that last card in their hand has to be like Sarkin then. All right, we'll attack this. This is threatening lethal. Okay, now we just get to basically dump our hand here. Green, red, black. We'll play Savvy Hunter. We're gonna play Coldron Cold Familiar. Drain. Now we can play a Goose. Get a food. And now I think we actually play the other Familiar. They don't have any removal in their main deck, so we might as well just go crazy here. 
like this, and we're all in. All in here. Pass it to you. All right. So we're afraid of a couple things. But with Midnight Reaper here, we get to redraw a lot here by just, just chump blocking whatever they play. That last card has just got to be Sarkin, right? It's their most powerful card. Otherwise, they would have discarded the land um, instead of the Vivian. I mean, Vivian basically does nothing right now. So it makes sense they, they got rid of that. Make a big goose, I guess. Okay. Killing our Wicked Wolf. All right, that's kind of a bummer, but at least we get to draw a card. Not ideal, but now just our gooses starting to create food is pretty strong. And now we're just gonna do everything we can to kill this. And that does mean we, every creature we have with power has to attack it, but then it'll be dead. And then we have goose to block. Okay, oh yeah, that's good. All right, so we get to make a food here. Oh, not the goose. All right, this guarantees Royal Scion dies and we get a food. Okay, and we'll play this. Play a land, Segu. Now we're quite ahead. Now we're quite far ahead. Boom! Oh man, this deck is sweet. <laughs> All right, Teamer Walker is here. Probably gonna side pretty similarly to uh, the way we did before. Noxious Grass are gonna be great. Bedevil, Assassin's Trophy. I don't like uh, Theater of Horrors. That's definitely gonna be more of a control card. I wanted this card um, just because I think control matchups are gonna pop up. Once again, another Oko deck. We're gonna take out Doom Whisperer. Feels bad to have to take this card out every time, but. Oops. Maybe we keep it in. Could be all right. Um, let's see. Now the cat combo I don't think is that good. Against a deck that kind of goes over the top of us. So maybe we trim on both pieces. Still have uh, have them in because if we draw one, that's not bad. But that being the case, we can probably get rid of Savvy Hunter in numbers. Let's try this. Yeah, I'm unallowed to take out Doom Whisper apparently. Just click it on it, does nothing. So I guess we're keeping it in. <laughs> Thanks, Arena. I guess we're gonna try it. That's really funny. And really awkward. <laughs> okay, not bad. And we don't have green for turn one, but still a solid hand here. Angros Rampage is actually going to be insane in this matchup. Now they power mulligan to turn two Planeswalkers, so they, they have it such a high percentage of the time. Especially with Once Upon a Time. They just either find the goose or they find the third land that they need. Now, if they start on Temple, then I feel um, pretty good about this. Because if they didn't start on Temple and they started on one of their green creatures, I wasn't going to be able to start with Fabled Passage. But now that we can, we won't have to Rampage next turn. So we'll just say go and we're just going to cast Paradise Druid then. So now they can have access to Flame Sweep post board. So we do got to play around stuff a little bit more than we normally would. But for the most part, we still kind of just get to play everything. So we'll go with Paradise Druid. Sigu. I'd love to just play my creatures next turn. But if they play Oko, I think we just have to kill it. All right, that's not an Oko. So now we're just going to go Midnight Reaper and Goose. And then we can just kill that with that. So let's go like this. Actually, I'd rather play a Blood Crypt, so let's go like this. Go with the Goose. And the Reaper of Midnight. And we'll say go. Now, Questing Beast is going to hit us once, but then uh, then it will be gone with uh, Angrath's Rampage here. 
Lava Coil is really good. Jeez, now we're flooding out hard. That's unfortunate. I believe our opener was the four cards that we had in hand, so that's uh, a bit awkward. All right, we're just gonna play a land tap, say go. Make a food with the goose. Okay. Don't care about either creature, to be honest, so. Create a food. Oh, we'll take our Wicked Wolves. Come on. All right. Our Wicked Wolf would have been a lot better. All right, we'll say go. Now they are starting to run low on cards as well, but yeah, it would help if we had any bit of gas here. Luckily they can top deck cards like that in their deck. I mean, we're glad we played Angrass Rampage now because, uh, you know, if we, if we draw it after they play that, then it feels real bad. Okay. Well, we got lots of good draws. That's not one of them. Now we're gonna leave this Fabled Passage just in case we draw a Mayhem Devil. Then we, I think maybe we could even kill Questing Beast. But we're just gonna have to take a hit here. Jeez. Well, here we're just drawing horrifically bad. Their draw is not that hard to beat, too. Like, one Wicked Wolf, and we are actually ahead again. But we're going to have to start sacrificing food pretty soon. We do have a lot of extra life in our food, but not what we want to do. All right, we'll sacrifice one. We're going to have plenty of mana, so we don't have to go crazy on it. The goose kind of oddly does just, like, neutralize Questing Beast. Okay, there we go. That's excellent. All right. This should put us ahead, I mean, unless they have a way to counter that, like, Disdainful Stroke or something. Wicked Wolf is excellent draw. Now we'd love like a Vraska. I might even add more Vraskas because that, that card would just be insane right now. All right, we'll say nope. We will go with no attacks. Okay. Royal Scion's pretty good, but they'll have to chump the Wicked Wolf every single turn or we can just threaten to kill it right away. What was my strategy here? Oh, what's their follow-up? Kind of figured there would be another uh, questing beast here, but that's actually not that big of a deal because they we can still just attack into that. All right, create a food. All right. Wow, okay. Now that's interesting. We could try to kill Questing Beast, but I think it's more important to just kill the Royal Scion because we can just block this. Now the question is, do we want them to sacrifice a Grazer? If we attack Wicked Wolf to the Royal Scion, we'll get a Grazer out of the way, but then we'll have to take four. Is it worth that exchange? Just them looting is what, uh, what could easily lose us this game. So I think, I think it is worth it to attack because we get an extra permanent off their battlefield and then we're just gonna bedevil this. Cause if we just attack them, they wouldn't block. But now we can sacrifice a good chunk of food. All right, we'll just play a land, say go. I actually still think I might just be able to be the aggressor here. Main phase make a food. 
All right, so we're gonna sack a food in response, just in case they have a, a burn spell of some kind. All right, now we're gonna make a food. I will untap, oh, hello, wow. All right, so one damage with Fabled Passage. All right, let's do the math here. One with Fabled Passage, two, three, four. So we can do it by sacrificing all our food. Do we wanna do that is the real question. I think we're just gonna play Mayhem Devil and just say go. Play this a little conservatively. Or how about we attack with Paradise Druid only? I like that. Throw away a Druid. They rightfully take it. And we're gonna play this nice and slow and steady. And we'll say go. One, two, three. So we can still kill Questing Beast here. They also just can't attack with it now because we just have Wicked Wolf to block. It's like they might be flooding out now even though we were flooding out earlier. Okay, so now we're just gonna make a food. Now we're able to do this next turn and we're uh, and then we'll have a food protection. And that's why we waited because if we did it the other way, we would have been out of food. So if they top deck Wicked Wolf, they would kill our Wicked Wolf and then we wouldn't have any food to generate it. But now we just get to really just kind of go off, so. We're gonna sacrifice. One to QB. We'll get a red. Now we're gonna sack, gain some life. Hit QB. Oh yeah, spicy, spicy. This deck is insane. If y'all are hungry and y'all like John out there, which who doesn't like John? John may be the my favorite archetype of all time across different formats. So if John and food are something that you're all about, check out John Food here. This deck is the real deal. Stay tuned to the deck tech where we individually talk about each card and a little bit about the matchups as well. So see you there. And welcome to the deck tech, everybody. This is this specific deck tech I'm really excited for just because. Not only do I wanna talk about some of the cards we have, I wanna talk about some of the additions after playing the deck that I wanna add in the future, things I liked, things I didn't like. Let's start with the matchups. So first, the three matchups we played, Soul Thai Food, Simic Food, and I know, I know, two different food decks, really, Corey? But that's kind of what we're gonna be seeing a lot now with Field of the Dead Band um, and Oko kind of just doing what it does best, just being loco. Um, so you, we're going to be playing against a lot of different food variants, especially week one, where people want to play something that's good. I, and we all want to win at Magic, right? Like, Magic's great. Winning is just as good, if not way better. Um, Field of the Dead is gone, so we're not seeing those decks anymore, luckily. But, um, so, so now, the way I want to base my decks, I want to base them around, A, do they have a good food matchup? Because before this... When I was deck building, the first thing I would say is, A, does this have a good Golos matchup? And if it didn't, I would usually dismiss the deck. But now we have a whole bunch of options unlocking thanks to Golos being gone. Mostly more than likely control options. So there is going to be uh, a big shakeup in the metagame. And then the third round, you just saw us take down uh, Teamer Super Friends. All the matches were pretty close. We did lose to the best deck in the format, uh, Simic Food, uh, but got the other two. You know, I mean, it's just a testament to how good Simic Food really is. So let's talk about the individual card choices. I love the one drops here. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, so four Cauldron Familiar, four Witches Oven, that kind of combo where you, you put the cat in the oven, as long as it has eight lives, you know, you get to bring it back. You get to do this at least nine times. Just kidding, you can do it infinite times. Um, but that just grinds out certain decks and Witches Oven against like Murderous Rider decks is just so annoying for them to deal with. And then when you compare it with Mayhem Devil or, or Midnight Reaper, you really just get to kind of go off here. So 
I really like the combo. We have Gilded Goose to ramp as well as get you some of these foods to generate these synergies. And now we have uh, in our two drop removal slot, Angrass Rampage. I think this card is going to be unbelievable because Simic Food decks, Nissa decks, Oko decks, they play a lot of creatures that some can't be interacted with too well, like uh, Witch's Wolf, um, or sorry, Wicked Wolf or Paradise Druid, where Rampage can still kill them, you know, um, pending on if there wasn't a ton of creatures played already, um, stuff like that. But then it can also late game just not have to worry about dealing with creatures to get through to attack Nissa. You can just be like, two mana, kill your Nissa. Um, and, and that's huge. That's huge in this format. As far as artifacts and uh, sacking and artifacts, I don't see a ton of relevance to that yet, but who really knows? We got a couple Paradise Druids as a couple of, as a way to fix your mana, uh, kind of ramp a little bit as well. We don't have a ton to ramp into, so the ramp isn't super relevant. It makes sense that there's only two. And then we get to the kind of the meat of our decks. Mayhem Devil might be the best card in this deck and just one of the best cards in the format. Being able to sack or deal a damage when you sack the, the cat to the oven, sack the food to bring it back, and then sack it again. I mean, you, you just get to generate an absurd amount of damage based on just the witch's oven and the familiar or just sacrificing food as well. You also have like Vraska's um, plus two ability to sacrifice something. Now it says plus two sack a permanent. If you do gain a life draw card and deal a damage when you have Mayhem Devil. Powerful stuff. Uh, Midnight Reaper is also very good with a lot of the synergies. It allows you to kind of not run out of steam. That's a card I actually want a third of. I, I really want to go up on that. And um, uh, we'll talk about a card that I don't like so much in a second here. Savvy Hunter was fine. Uh, served its purpose. You know, I got to draw some cards occasionally, but uh, the ability didn't come up a lot, but I think it's a necessary evil as another food generator, as well as a decent body. It, it, it's okay. One Bedevil. Bedevil is a strong card right now. It's pretty tough on the mana when you're just playing three forests and Bedevil. It already feels kind of bad. Um, so then we get to our four drops. Wicked Wolf and Veraska, I think, are both at an unbelievable spot in the metagame right now. Veraska kills Oko. Kills early um, mana creatures, and then Wicked Wolf just kills everything. Wicked Wolf is unbelievable now that Field of the Dead is banned. It just doesn't have any matchups where it's dead. Unless we see like Esper Doom Foretold and kind of these more over-the-top control decks start to pop up, which we will. I mean, these, these decks were being suppressed by Golos, but now that Golos is gone, uh, we're going to see a rise in control decks. So make sure you're prepared. And then two Doom Whisper. This is a card I'm going to cut. Moving forward, I'm going to cut two Doom Whispers and I'm going to put in a third Vraska and a third Midnight Reaper moving forward. So I encourage you to do the same because in an Oko field world, Doom Whisper is just a five mana elk. You know, I mean, sometimes it can uh, get carried away and win, but like against the control matchups, you don't want uh, just a five mana creature that dies to a Kaios Wrath. Um, dies to a lot of removal. I, I just don't think Doom Whisper is good enough right now. So my recommendation is this. Cut two Doom Whispers, add a Veraska, add a Midnight Reaper, and I want to cut a Swamp to add a Castle Lockthwin, a second one. I think that card's really, really good at this deck because you kind of run out of steam sometimes if you don't have Midnight Reaper. That's why I want to increase the numbers as well as it's a pretty low opportunity cost to add that. But the, uh, but the ceiling on it is kind of through the charts. So those would be my recommendations after playing the deck uh, moving forward. So then we'll talk about the sideboard here. I love the sideboard. For Duress, um, I think it's just going to be a staple again. Duress was bad because Golos, all of its creatures were also its spells. And what I mean by that is like Hydrate Crisis is your card advantage spell, your, your, your draw engine. Uh, Realm Cloak Giant is your Wrath of God. Um, Beanstalk Giant is your Accelerant. So the only thing you hit with Duress was like Securitas Route, Time Spiral, um, you know, just, just cards that it wasn't good enough to bring in all of them. So we were starting to see like Drill Bit pop up because it was like the only way to actually take everything. Duress is back, baby, and it's going to be great again. So pack your Duresses. One Legion's End, I feel like we want at least two because there's certain matchups. This card's unbelievable. Like Ken Yukihiro's Knight. So I want to find room for another one of those. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what to cut for it. 
Three Noxious Grass, just your Simic card. Um, being able to, for two mana, kill Nyssa is perfect. I could even see wanting a fourth. Maybe cutting the Assassin's Trophy for a fourth Noxious Grass and a second Legion Zed. I kind of like that change as well. So, um, so we're learning to evaluate and uh, upgrade this deck together because I think this deck does have legs. I think it's really good. Then we got two flame sweeps for those kind of knight style decks, for these uh, adventure decks that are trying to go wide on you. You know, having this kind of three mana deal with anything card is going to be great. Same with like Cry of the Carnarium is going to be another card that's going to be coming back now that Golos is gone. And then we got one more Bedevil. Um, just another answer, clean answer to anything that has bigger stuff. Anything where three mana trades up. And then our last slot I really love here is that's Theater of Horrors. For these control decks that I think inevitably are going to be popping up, Theater of Horrors is just an unbelievably great card engine, uh, card drawing engine in this deck. Just because Cauldron Familiar triggers the Theater of Horrors. So if you have a food in play or you just have a Cauldron Familiar in, uh, in your graveyard with a food in play... Uh, or, excuse me, or have a Cauldron Familiar in your hand, you can just play that and then play the cards underneath uh, the Theater of Horrors. I think it's a great uh, little synergy that fits quite well into this deck. All right, everybody, new, new standard here with Field of the Dead being banned is super exciting. It's basically a whole new world to explore yet again. Like I've said before, it's magical Christmas land when I get a new standard. When I get a mid-standard freshen up, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's second Christmas. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's second Christmas. So second Christmas will continue next weekend. I want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week on Dropping Bonds. Bye-bye.